Jupiter, of course, at about 11.2 times the diameter of Earth, and more than 317 times Earth's mass, is the biggest world, at least in our solar system. Our own Jupiter is plenty large enough. Fully two-thirds of the planet mass in the entire solar system lives there. Even to the naked eyes of the ancients, it must have looked huge and bright. The giant's upper atmosphere, with its strong east-west winds, a continually changing tapestry of smoky, abstract art. Jupiter and Saturn are largely gaseous, that is mostly hydrogen and helium, but mostly hydrogen. And light elements can whip up into blustery breezes. Big winds, driven by big internal heat sources, make for big storms. The famous example, Jupiter's Great Red Spot. It's been there for hundreds of years, as far as we know, uh, possibly longer. The inner core of the red spot may rotate in a different direction than the outer periphery of the red spot. Jupiter is thought to have a fluid interior, but there's some evidence that it may have, in fact, a solid core. It's been estimated to have a mass which is probably 10 times the mass of the Earth. But there's some wide error bars on those measurements. Uh, generally, the, the core masses for, the, for Jupiter and Saturn can range between zero and about 20 Earth masses. So it's conceivable, I mean, it's formally allowed that they have a zero mass core, but they're just total gas. One idea is that at the core of uh, the giant planets Jupiter and Saturn, there are things not all that different from the Earth that grew in this fashion, but that in the outer solar system, then there remained a lot of dust and gas that collapsed down due to gravity around these rocky cores. We're really not sure. The modeling that has been done for the giant planets indicates that it's possible that Jupiter and Saturn contain solid cores, maybe 15 to 100 Earth masses, but we don't have any real, excuse the pun, solid evidence for solid cores. Terrific tidal forces tear at everything near these planets. Consider the case of the now legendary comet Shoemaker-Levy 9. On March the 23rd, 1993, we were taking photographs of the night sky of an area near the planet Jupiter. And the next day, Carolyn Shoemaker discovered these two images, and one on each photograph, of a sh totally shattered comet. This comet had been doing something awful a few months earlier. But in July of 1992, the comet had passed within 20,000 kilometers of Jupiter's cloud tops, and the comet just sort of broke apart as it went by Jupiter. On May 22, 1993, the announcement came out that in 1994, all 21 fragments of the comet are going to collide with Jupiter. Even objects hundreds of thousands of kilometers away feel the tug and the twist of these big planets. Jupiter, for instance, uh, has cleared gaps in the asteroid belt where its residences reside in the asteroid belt. The uh, large planets in the solar system act to stir around the smaller debris, and they themselves are sinks for that debris. Thanks to Jupiter's uh, presence, we're here rather than dead, or, or rather than like a uh, lower forms of, uh, of life, we're here to appreciate it because damaging impacts happen on the Earth so, so little. Jupiter is so massive, its gravity can actually fling small asteroids and comets completely out of the solar system so it escapes the gravitational pull of our sun altogether. These planets also respond to solar storms by creating immense auroras, often encircling areas several times larger than our entire Earth. We've seen aurora around Jupiter, and the aurora around Jupiter uh, is completely different than the aurora around the Earth. It's a very um, unusual and, and uh, sort of very interesting phenomena that it would be formed by a different mechanism and respond in a different way to the sun. 